Hey everyone, Sniper Damien here, and today I want to talk about Tom Clancy's The Division 2 Private Beta, which took place this past weekend. I'm currently fighting a cold, so I apologize if my voice sounds weird or if I make gross noises. So the big question on everyone's mind, does this game overcome the challenges and downfalls of the first one? Well, let's talk about it. And let's start with the things I really liked about the game. Also, before we continue, I just want to remind everyone that this was only a beta and we didn't get to see everything the game has to offer. So while there are very telling things that were included in the demo, please remember that this isn't the full release and I can't really report anything I didn't get to experience. Now, let's begin. I gotta start with combat because holy crap on a biscuit does combat feel nice. Everything feels better. The way the guns handle, the way enemies won't just let you engage in urban trench warfare tactics, the way the weapons handle, all of it comes together to form a really smooth package that I feel really improves upon the combat from the first game. And speaking from personal opinion, having played with all the different weapons available, I think this game, more than any other in recent memory, really encourages you to branch out and try different weapon types because, let's face it, there were just certain weapons in Division 1 that were simply must-haves and anything outside of those weapons were dumpster fires. In Division 2, however, anything and everything can be a god-tier weapon and wipe an entire enemy squad in PvP. Sidearms still feel meh, but I usually don't find myself in a situation where a sidearm is necessary or I'm in a situation where it doesn't matter if I have a sidearm or not. I'm about to die. Getting back to the main point, combat feels and looks great, and I'm really happy with the overall package they brought to the table here. Now let's talk about the quality of life. I never really liked the fact that the one and only place that seemed to be trying to restore any sense of normalcy in Division 1 was your base of operations. It made an already drab and dreary frozen landscape seem even more lifeless, with tiny handfuls of civilians aimlessly wandering the streets, looking for a bottle of water, or a nutrient bar, or a med kit and giving you an assault rifle in exchange. Because, you know, that's normally what I barter with in exchange for a bag of Cheetos. There are now small enclaves of civilians banding together to make the most out of a crappy situation in settlements that you can work with, and who will reward you with new personnel for your base of operations, and other rewards that I'm sure will become apparent in the full release. Not only that, but the environments you explore in the game have also been improved upon, it's weird seeing plants and wildlife thriving in the urban jungle of Washington and caught me off guard more than once. I mean, the first time I saw dragonflies and bumblebees floating around a patch of flowers, or a deer running away from the sounds of gunfire, or a fox trying to give himself a bath before taking off through the brush was a sight to behold in a game where the only thing I've come to expect from the previous entry is birds, rats, and the occasional dog. The world seems alive and actually makes me feel like I have something to fight for instead of Bad men hurt city, go kill. There's also some changes to your character. Health kits have been replaced by armor repair kits and instead of just pressing a button and getting instantly healed, it takes about 3 seconds to channel the kit and fix your armor. It means that the armor on your equipment is no longer just a static damage reducer, it actually affects your survivability in combat. An interesting design choice and one that I think a few players aren't going to like. But I actually really dig it, and it means that PvP won't be reduced to a game of who has more armor kits. While we're talking about quality of life, let's also talk about the random events and activities that take place around the map as you're running around. I only really saw two types of random events or activities, or whatever they're called, and that was loudspeaker takeovers and public executions. Basically, these were smaller engagements similar to the activities from the first division, where you went in roughed up some bad guys, and got supplies to upgrade the various wings of your base of operations. There's nothing spectacular or jaw-dropping, but it adds yet another layer to the game that was missing. It adds another breath of life to the world, and I personally really enjoy small stuff like this in games. Something else that took me by surprise were the mini gear sets. The first time I picked up a piece of gear and saw the odd symbol in the background, I honestly thought it was like a cosmetic thing. Like, if you got other pieces with that symbol, they'd look similar, and you know you were wearing matching gear pieces. Turns out, they're actually micro gear sets. You can find a lot of small three-piece sets that give you some very baseline improvements, like 10% accuracy and extra damage to elites and so on. While it's not a huge thing, and was really just kind of casually put in there, I really like it, and it actually gives you a reason to care early on about the gear you're picking up instead of just, well, these gloves have better armor, so yeah. 
I think it's a great addition to a game where shooting and looting are the orders of the day, and I think it will help players get more involved in what they're doing early on. Now let's talk a little bit about PvP, because I feel like this is where the developers put most of their time and energy into. Remember the first division where you were either geared specifically for PvE or PvP? And if you were the former, you were going to have a really bad time in the Dark Zone and Last Stand? Well, those days seem to be gone as Ubisoft has brought normalization to the game. What is normalization? Simply put, it takes the gear that everyone's wearing and using in the PvP zones and balances them out to where they're almost identical in armor, damage, so on and so forth to level 30 equipment. It means that whether you're going in with high-end gear or basic equipment, everyone has a chance to be competitive and everyone has the chance to be a rock star. It's going to be more about skill and tactical advantage instead of who's farmed for gear the longest. And while I do have some concerns that I'll talk about near the end of the video, I think this is a much needed change of pace from the first game and will encourage more players to branch out and try PvP when they otherwise might be disinclined to do so. And these changes affect both Dark Zone and Dedicated PvP, so you never have to worry about being good in one and getting wrecked in the other. If you're competitive in one, you'll be fine. Just keep your head on a swivel, don't stand still, and make sure you have the right skills equipped, and you'll be fine. Hell, I was never good at PvP in Division, and even I was nearly wiping the entire enemy team by myself using mods and equipment designed for PvE. So that brings us to the things I didn't like about The Division 2, and I gotta say that some of these were shocking and others just downright disappointing. First up, skills. I hate the skills. Seriously. Someone went to the drawing board with the skill designs, pitched it to their boss, and their boss was like, overly complicated to utilize and practically useless? Sounds great. Here's some code. Go put it in. First off, we only got to use three skills in the beta. The Seeker Mine, the Turret, and the Drone. The Seeker Mine and Turret were both in the first game, so I was a little disappointed that we weren't getting a chance to really mess around with anything new. But we were allowed to utilize a couple of mods, that were new, and... well, I wasn't blown away. The Seeker Mine no longer chases down targets on its own. The turret has a mod that now makes you deploy it, designate a target, and then manually press the skill button to make it fire, and the drone lets you choose between repairing your armor or going on a bombing run. The problem with the Bombardier drone is the exhausting amount of time it takes to use. First, you gotta deploy it. That's two seconds. Now you have to designate the point on the ground you want the drone to start its run. Let's call that 3 to 5 seconds. Now you have to decide where you want the bombing run to end at from the point you designated. 3 seconds if you can get the aiming right. Good luck. 5 seconds or more if you can't. Then the drone flies over after all of that and starts its run, taking another 3 seconds to do so. Do the math, it's a total of 11 seconds minimum to use that mod, and that's not even factoring in anything like enemy movement, which makes that mod very situational, suppressing fire, friendly grenades causing your target to move, and so on. In fact, the only two skills I used regularly throughout the beta were the armor repair drone and the assault turret, which is just like the base turret you get in the first game, except you can now tell it what enemy to focus on. And speaking of mods, let's switch gears to weapon mods. Seriously, these things are jank. Now before I rip these things a new one, I gotta say that I do enjoy the fact that all I have to do is obtain a weapon mod once by crafting it. And I can now apply that mod to each and every weapon I own from now until the Division 2 servers shut down without having to craft them again or spend resources. But, and this is a seriously big but, I don't think they're worth it based solely off of what I saw and experienced. Let me give you two great examples. The first is a muzzle mod that I obtained by spinning shade tech. The muzzle gives you plus 20% accuracy. Sounds good, right? And I can apply that to multiple weapons now without spending resources. Great. Here's the downside. Minus 10% damage to elites. Meaning you can hit the big bad at the end of the mission, but your damage has just been nerfed. And all of the mods are like this. From the mods I got to see and experience, you either have greater weapon control but can barely kill a housefly, or you can one-shot Goku if you can ever manage to hit him. Seriously, what's the point of giving me a buff if you're just going to nerf the living hell out of me? Also, 
be very wary if you attach any kind of optics with a zoom on it. If your sights even have just a 3x zoom, the game forces you to go to first person view to use your weapon. I didn't realize this going into a PvP match and got my ass handed to me because of it. Overall, it just seemed like most of the weapon mods weren't worth the trouble, and I ended up playing through most of the beta without mods of any type. Towards the end, I threw them on some of my weapons just to see what kind of difference they made. Short answer? None. I might have had something to do with the gear I was wearing or the various mods I equipped counterbalanced everything. I'm not real sure, but if there's no chance or no change to this rather on launch day, I'm probably not going to use the mods. Hell, I'd even accept just having the penalties or, you know, going back to the way mods worked in the first game. Anything but this. I didn't even really notice the mods giving me much of a bonus at in-game levels, and that's not encouraging. Speaking of in-game, I wish I could talk to you about it and specializations and whatnot, but I can't. The reason why? Because on both occasions, I tried to play through the in-game mission, special ammo dropped once per attempt to go through the mission, and I couldn't pick it up. No joke. And it wasn't just me who experienced this. My wife also tried and failed to pick up special ammo. The first time was because no one dropped any of the ammo for her specialization, and the second time was because she simply couldn't pick it up. And the mission wasn't engaging enough for me to want to experience it a third time. Yes, it was different from the main story mission, which make a kudos to Ubisoft for that. And the Black Tusks, a faction similar to the Last Man Battalion, provided a different and interesting challenge compared to the normal ads, but the one reason I wanted to play the in-game content was glitched out. Not only that, but the three specialization characters they gave you to play with were just given a variety of weapons and gear, and you were confined to the mission area exclusively. So I couldn't go out, I couldn't try to farm for better equipment, and I was stuck with what they gave me. I understand that Ubisoft doesn't want their entire game spoiled, but I couldn't even play PvP with these beefed up characters to see how in-game equipment affected that, which tells me that there might be some real issues with normalization once you reach higher levels. There's also a major issue with enemy scaling in missions, especially if you play on higher difficulties. The game scales enemies based on your party level and how many players are in said party. Now, if you go in solo or with one other person, it's fine. But once you hit three players, prepare to get wrecked. Seriously, I can't tell you how many times me and my party died just trying to play a hard difficulty mission with four players. It wasn't like we were below the NPC level or that we didn't have good gear. The enemies just became bullet sponges. And I say sponges if your sponges at home are made of adamantium and hatred and packing more heat than an NRA meeting in the south. It was a grueling experience, and while I admired the challenge it presented, we never actually got to finish the mission because we got hit with a Delta III disconnect and honestly just wanted to move on to other portions of the beta. And I would be an heir if I didn't mention the server and game stability issues. I understand it's a beta and these things are going to happen, but at one point we were experiencing Delta III drops and game crashes every 15 minutes or so. It made exploring the world difficult and forced us to plan out our activities so that if there was a drop, we wouldn't be in the middle of raiding an enemy stronghold or about to put the boot into a big bad's windpipe. Now, I was going to make a list of the bugs we encountered in the game, but to be honest, I feel like the previously mentioned items are bigger issues. And no, it's not because I don't care about the bugs, but if the game is fundamentally broken at its core and the gameplay mechanics don't work, I'd rather the devs focus on those rather than an invisible wall that I can simply walk around by moving two feet to the right. I will say, though, that some of the bugs in the beta were hysterically funny. I ran up on one grenadier who switched weapons from his grenade launcher to his pistol. The game, however, didn't change the appearance of the weapon, so it looked like he was still using the launcher. So instead of running away from me and blind firing behind him with a pistol... It looked like he was using the launcher, and bullet impacts exploded in a fireball. It didn't do extra damage or stagger me, it was just funny. One of the more serious bugs, however, came near the end of the beta when we were experiencing audio issues. We noticed that the enemies shooting at us weren't making gunfire noises as we were getting pelted from all angles with 5.56 rounds. Then our guns stopped making noise. 
then the NPCs, then us, then the ambient sounds of the game world, then finally the music, causing us to basically be deaf for several minutes. So having said all of that, let's get to my impressions of the game as I've experienced it and talk about some concerns I have. I really had a good time playing this game. It felt good overall despite the constant disconnects and the various bugs and glitches I experienced, and I'm really happy with PvP normalization, at least at lower levels. But for every good thing the beta showed us, I feel like there was just something holding the game back. I don't think it's going to be a bad game, but I don't think it's going to be a great game either. I feel like it'll be solid, but Ubisoft definitely isn't going to be breaking any industry standards here. It's really disappointing too, because you can look and see the hard work the devs have put into this project. But as I mentioned, for every step forward they've taken, there's a troll standing on the bridge pushing them back to where they were. Some of the major concerns I have with the game stems from the PvP aspects of it. As I said, the PvP normalization works with the character I had at lower levels, and by lower I mean level 7. Everyone's gear got the level 30 stat boost as promised. No one player seemed to have an advantage over the others, and all that's great. I think that's going to open the doors for some players who maybe got into the division late like I did and never got the chance to thrive in PvP. My concern, though, comes from the end game. The normalization stuff comes from the game basically boosting the stats of everyone's gear to put everyone on a nice, even level. But what is that going to look like once you actually hit level 30 and start getting powerful gear sets and exotics? Is the game going to boost regular equipment to the level of the ultra-rare equipment some players are going to have? Is the game going to lower the stats of that ultra-rare gear that the player has spent hours grinding and farming for to make things even? Will the game simply not touch the player's stats at that point because all their gear is already at level 30 stats, so there's nothing to adjust for? I personally think PvP normalization is a great step in the right direction, but I also feel it's not going to work the way anyone wants in the end game. If it balances out level 30 gear across the board, whether it's a gear set, classified gear, or an exotic or whatever, then most veteran players aren't going to bother worrying about the end game content because what's the point of farming for gear if it's just going to get nerfed? And if the game doesn't balance out that gear and adjust the stats, then it creates the same problem for the more casual players like, oh, I don't know, it did in the first division? And what am I talking about? Basically, it means that PvP becomes inaccessible for anyone who works a 9-to-5, comes home to spend time with their family, and then gets to play for a couple of hours, maybe, if they're lucky. On the same note, while I did enjoy PvP, I kind of felt like the combat was meh. Everyone was using the same skills, weapons, tactics, so on and so forth, with very little alteration between them and the next team of players. This probably stems from how little access we had to the skills, but most of the time the fighting simply came down to who could shoot their target in the head the fastest. It felt more like I was playing a third-person Halo multiplayer match where the goal is to shoot the head until the shields go pop instead of the division. And I also have to say that while I appreciate Ubisoft doing their best to make sure rogue agents don't spawn camp the entrances to the Dark Zone, they need to address a couple of things. Number one, if you know where to hide, you can still spawn camp. You just can't camp right outside of the checkpoints. Also, the respawning system for rogues is jank. If you die, you have to pick a respawn point. If that respawn point happens to be a checkpoint, you better hope your allies have died as well. Otherwise, you'll step out into the dark zone and get immediately shrekt by the new defensive turrets the devs have set up to protect players from rogues. Which means if you die and your squad hasn't, you either have to wait for their rogue status to end or leave the group. And if that's not annoying enough, I've seen clips of the game that show manhunt targets getting killed and having to endure a 60 second respawn timer. 60 seconds. A full minute. I mean, yeah, they're being asshats, but come on, that's a bit excessive. I feel like Ubisoft has kind of painted themselves into a corner without realizing it, and I also feel like no matter what the outcome is, Division 2 might not be looking at as long of a shelf life as everyone, myself included, is hoping for. Now again, this is the beta. We didn't get access to everything, and we definitely didn't get access to the material that I wanted to experience. 
And just because I had this particular experience with the game doesn't mean that others did. I know for a fact that other players were able to pick up specialized ammo in the in-game mission. I know other players didn't have the same issues with game and server stability that I had. But this is my thoughts on what I got to experience. So do I think The Division 2 has overcome the problems of its predecessor? In certain aspects, yeah. But for me, there are still enough problems that I can safely say that I would wait a few days for the streamers and YouTube creators to review the game before committing to buying. I'll be playing it early as I pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition, but knowing what I know now, I'm not certain that the game will be worth it. I'm going to have fun, but we can't keep giving these companies a pass just because we had fun. And I can definitely say if I hadn't had friends playing with me, I most certainly would not have had as much fun as I did with this whole thing. Anyway, that's my impressions for the private beta. I'm sorry guys that the audio is going to sound kind of janky. Again, I'm sick, so kind of fighting with a head cold. But what did you guys think? Did you have similar experiences, or did you see something that concerned you more than what I pointed out? If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I'm hoping to start putting up more of these videos now that I have the ability to do so, so stick around. More content is on the way. Make sure to follow us on social media and Twitch. Links are down in the description below. And until next time, this is Sniper Damien. And I'm signing out. Have a good day.